Usually when you think of an acid, you think of a compound with the formula HA that donates a proton to water to give you hydronium and its conjugate A-. And bases are some compound with the generic formula B that accepts a proton from water to give you hydroxide and BH+. But with weak acids and bases, there's a significant amount of reversibility present, which means A- can accept a proton from hydronium, making it a base, and BH plus can donate a proton to hydroxide, making it an acid. And that's not the only place where these two ions can show that type of acid-base behavior. A minus can accept a proton from water to give you hydroxide, making it a base, and BH plus can donate a proton to water to make hydronium, making it an acid. So if you make an aqueous solution with an ionic compound, one or both of that compound's ions could potentially react with water in a similar manner, and that's going to affect the pH of your solution. Let's look at potassium fluoride, for example. Now, potassium is an alkali metal, and for the most part, ions from group 1A and 2A don't show any significant reactivity with water. So this ion would be neutral in solution. On the other hand, fluoride is the conjugate of hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid. That means fluoride can accept a proton from water to form hydroxide, which means that this ion is basic in solution. So you have one ion that's neutral, the other is basic, the overall effect is a basic salt. Now let's look at ammonium nitrate. Ammonium is the conjugate of ammonia, a weak base, which means that it can donate a proton to water to form hydronium, which makes it an acidic ion. But nitrate is the conjugate of a strong acid, nitric acid. That means that nitrate can't accept a proton from water like fluoride did because the conjugates of strong acids can't act like bases. That means that nitrate is a neutral ion. So this time you have one ion that's acidic, another ion that's neutral, the overall effect is an acidic salt. But what about potassium nitrate? Well we just said that potassium doesn't react with water and nitrate doesn't react with water. So if neither ion reacts with water, it must be a neutral salt overall. And for cases like ammonium fluoride, where both ions react, you have to compare the dissociation constants of each ion. In this case, the acid dissociation constant of ammonium is larger than the base dissociation constant of fluoride, which means that net effect should be an acidic salt. If the opposite was true and the Kb was the bigger of the two, you'd have a basic salt. And if both happen to be the same, the effect would be a neutral salt. And those are the four scenarios that you usually run into. If your compound is made up of a neutral ion and an acidic ion, you're going to have an acidic salt. You put this compound in water, the pH should go down. If one ion is neutral and the other is basic, you should have a basic salt. Put the compound in water, the pH goes up. If both ions are neutral, you'll have a neutral salt where you put it in water and nothing happens to the pH. And if one ion is acidic and the other is basic, you're going to have to compare the respective dissociation constants of each ion to see what the net effect is going to be. So there's a couple of other things we should talk about before we stop. Going back to our discussion on potassium fluoride, we said that 1A and 2A cations are usually neutral. But most other metal cations are usually acidic in aqueous solution. Remember, water is polar, with the electrons pulled toward the oxygen end of the molecule. So when water interacts with a cation like aluminum, the electrons get pulled even further away from the hydrogen end, which weakens the bond and makes it easier to be donated to another water molecule, producing hydronium. The effect on acidity is usually significant. Aluminum, for example, has a Ka of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5, making it almost as acidic as acetic acid, who has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So to sum up everything that we've talked about up to this point, when you're trying to figure out the effect an ionic compound is going to have on an aqueous solution, start by taking it just one ion at a time. Over on the cation side, we've seen two possibilities. If you have a group 1A or 2A ion, it's going to be neutral. Any other cation that we've looked at is going to be acidic. Over on the anion side, if the conjugate of that anion is a strong acid, it's going to be a neutral ion. But if the conjugate is a weak acid, you have a basic ion. And once you know how each ion is going to behave in water, then you can kind of step back and see what the overall effect is going to be. 
The only other thing you might run into are amphoteric ions. For example, dihydrogen phosphate is amphoteric. It can react with water like an acid or like a base. To figure out what type of ion it is overall, you can compare its Ka with its Kb. In this case, the Ka of the ion is greater than its Kb, which makes it an acidic ion. When the Kb is the bigger of the two, it's a basic ion. And if the two happen to equal, the ion is neutral.